the lightsaber an elegant weapon for a more civilized age. From the great scourge of Malachor to the brightest days of the High Republic, to the darkest nights of the Galactic Empire, these technological marvels have been around for almost as long as the Jedi themselves, slicing through droids, cutting off hands, and delivering surprisingly survivable stabs to the stomach. But how do they work? How would you build your own? What are the various types of lightsaber? And how powerful are they? Well, luckily for any of you out there looking to build your own, on a recent Law Tours flight to the planet of Tatooine, one of our ship captains had a bit of a run-in with a sinister-looking Gungan. Thankfully, our captain managed to escape with the Gungan's red-bladed lightsaber, bringing it back to base for our R&D team to analyze. And it appears that no two lightsabers are ever quite the same. A Jedi constructs their blade during their Padawan training, customizing the weapon to reflect their unique combat style, physiology, and personal aesthetic choices. But there are a few basic components present in all lightsabers that you'll have to acquire to start building your own. Each lightsaber is powered by a high output power cell, the most common of these being the Diatium Power Core, made from the metal alloy Diatium. These power cells are incredibly efficient, capable of lasting for a long time, without needing replacement, in part because Jedi are rarely meant to use their lightsaber. The energy from this power cell is channeled up through the lightsaber hilt to the kyber crystal, which lies at the heart of every lightsaber. They focus and amplify the energy from the power cell, making the blade possible. For years, these incredibly rare crystals were gathered by Jedi younglings, on planets like Ilum and Jeddah. But gathering your own unique crystal is only part of the journey, each crystal is unique and requires a force-sensitive individual to align with and awaken the force within it. Initially, these crystals are clear and colorless. However, when a force user awakens a crystal, it takes on a distinctive color. Green, yellow, blue, purple, the colors are many, and they all reflect the nature of the saber's new master. This personal connection is what makes each lightsaber truly unique to its wielder. Once the power has been channeled through the kyber crystal, it passes through the focusing ring, which aligns the crystal to emit the blade. The focusing ring must be calibrated precisely, otherwise the crystal could crack, or the saber might explode upon activation. The superheated plasma then runs further up the blade through the modulation circuits and energy gates. These crucial components control the energy flow of the lightsaber, modulating the frequency and intensity of the blade to ensure that it remains stable and consistent, maintaining the lightsaber's efficiency and safety. And at the end of the lightsaber is the blade emitter, where focusing lenses and field energizers shape and stabilize the plasma into a blade. The emitter wraps the plasma in a tight magnetic field, forming the iconic lightsaber shape we all recognize. And all of these components are housed within the lightsaber hilt, which can be constructed from a range of materials, including simple metal alloys, more expensive materials like hazy and smelt, and in some cases, even rare materials, like how Wookiee Jedi, tend to construct their hilt from wood carved from trees such as the Brylark or Roshir tree. The size of the hilt could also vary, being larger for certain species of a large stature, and smaller for Jedi like Master Yoda. On the outside of the hilt, additional items are added for functionality. There's an activator switch which turns the lightsaber on and off. Many hilts also feature a blade length adjuster, allowing the user to modify the length of the blade as needed. Additionally, power adjusters can also be used to set the blade to a non-lethal low power setting for training purposes. Once you've gathered all these necessary components, designed your lightsaber hilt and attuned to your kyber crystal, you're finally ready to build your own lightsaber. You'll be given a set of instructions on how to assemble all the pieces, then instructed to use the force to put it all together. Once built and activated, the power cell sends energy up through the kyber crystal, which focuses this energy into a plasma beam. The beam then passes through the focusing ring, aligning the crystal correctly to emit the blade. Next, it runs through the modulation circuits and energy gates, ensuring the energy flow remains stable and safe. Finally, it reaches the blade emitter, which projects the plasma and contains it within a magnetic field, forming the familiar blade shape. But like we said, no two lightsabers are really the same. 
The styles are as many and varied as their wielders. So let's take a quick look at some of the most unique lightsaber designs to give you some inspiration when building your own. Starting with the crossguard lightsaber. This ancient design is favoured by practitioners of lightsaber combat style too, also known as Makashi. This style was specifically developed for dueling against other lightsaber wielders. The crossguard provides added defence during duels, with the quillons providing extra lightsaber blades to the side, helping to block and deflect attacks. One notable example is Kylo Ren's lightsaber. Due to his kyber crystal being cracked, his blade was unstable, emitting a dangerous amount of energy. The additional emitters on the side act as vents, channeling this excess energy and creating the crossguard effect. The double-bladed lightsaber features a blade emitted from both ends of a single hilt. It's used for its versatility and increased surface area covered in combat, making it a formidable weapon for both offense and defense. The primary benefit of a double-bladed lightsaber includes its ability to overwhelm opponents with rapid, powerful attacks. Its design allows for greater reach and the ability to fend off multiple attackers. The increased surface area and ability to spin the blades around a central point provide both defensive and offensive capabilities. Now sometimes a double-bladed lightsaber is formed by joining two separate blades together at their ends, while other times it is a single unit housing the components for two blades within a longer hilt. The light whip was notably wielded by Jedi Knight Venestra Rowe during the High Republic era. This rare weapon functions like a traditional lightsaber, but with a flexible whip-like blade. It offers incredible versatility in combat, allowing for a broader range of motion and the ability to strike from unexpected angles. It would be particularly effective for keeping multiple opponents at bay, and it could be used to entangle and control opponents when used on a lower power setting. The light whip can be created by modifying the blade length and emitter settings, producing a flexible plasma blade which could switch between a standard lightsaber and a light whip mode with a simple adjustment. The double-bladed lightsaber of the Empire's Inquisitors features a spinning mechanism that offers several combat advantages. The rapid spinning motion allows the wielder to easily deflect blaster fire and disorient opponents, especially those also wielding lightsabers. The spinning mechanism is a frictionless repulsor lift assisted device that allows the twin blades to rotate rapidly independent of the blade's handle. This design not only aids in defense, but also gives the wielder the ability to use the lightsaber as a mode of transportation, as the repulsor lift mechanism allows the Inquisitor limited flight. The dual phase lightsaber is unique because it allows the user to adjust the blade length on the fly. This adaptability can provide a strategic advantage in combat, enabling quick changes in reach and striking distance, shortening the blade for close quarters fighting, or extending it for a longer reach, allowing the user to surprise their opponent and gain the upper hand. This feature is achieved through an advanced mechanism in the hilt that switches between two different crystals, altering the blade's length at the flick of a switch. And those were just a few of the majorly unique and slightly out there designs to give you some inspiration. So now you've forged your own lightsaber, just how powerful is it and what could you use it for? Well from what we can gather, a lightsaber's blade burns at around 20,000 degrees celsius to put that into perspective, that's about three times hotter than the surface of the sun. This incredible heat gives the lightsaber its unparalleled cutting power, allowing it to cut through almost anything. And the only thing stopping the wielder being fried by the saber themselves is the field containing the blade's plasma. However, it's not completely unstoppable. Certain materials like Beskar found in Mandalorian armor and the metal Cortosis which can short circuit a lightsaber blade are both resistant to lightsaber blows. The lightsaber isn't just about raw power, however. It's also a very deliberate weapon. Its precision reduces the chance of hitting civilians, unlike blasters, and the sight and sound of a lightsaber igniting can often stop foes before a fight even begins, making it an effective tool for Jedi maintaining peace and order throughout the galaxy. A lightsaber also has several secondary practical uses, it can light up dark areas, making it useful for exploration. It can evaporate liquids, which I guess could come in handy. And the blade's heat can also cauterize wounds instantly, 
providing an emergency medical tool. So now that you know how these technological marvels work and the various models of lightsabers out there, you're finally ready to head out with your own lightsaber. But what will yours look like? Make sure to let us know down in the comments and subscribe to join us again soon. Thanks for watching, catch you next time. The Lotto Spaceport is your destination for tours through the most fascinating worlds, groups, and events in the multiverse. From sci-fi to fantasy, we have it all. So make sure to subscribe and book your next trip with us.